Well, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on re-engineering and future-proofing uh, the issuance, origination and admission process. I'm delighted uh, to have with us uh, Leanne Bassett, Head of Issuances for Artrax, and Damir Timmer, uh, CEO of Scribestar, uh, who have been working together um, to, bring, to bring this together for you uh, this afternoon. Um, you'll probably know me, um, you've probably met me before, I'm the CEO um, at ZN Group, um, and I'm chairing the session today. My job is really to um, get out of your way as quickly as we can so we get onto the main content. Um, but first of all, to thank um, our sponsors. We're very fortunate at the FS Club uh, to have a range of sponsors who enable this webinar series and enable us to get really interesting content uh, for you. The programme for today is uh, relatively simple, uh, a very brief introduction from me, uh, a presentation jointly from Leanne and Damir, uh, and then time for Q&A. Um, for those of you who haven't used the GoToWebinar platform before, the way you ask a question uh, is to find the question tab on the dashboard on your screen, uh, type the question in, uh, and then I'll field that uh, during the Q&A session. But please uh, do put your questions in at any point during the session, um, and it helps to keep the, uh, the conversation flowing. A couple of other housekeeping points. Uh, the session is being recorded today, uh, and a recording will be up on the site within a couple of days. Um, so if you want to go back and uh, look again, or you want to share this with friends and colleagues who may well be interested, um, that recording will be there for you. Um, and just to say that if you do ask questions uh, during the session, we'll uh, make sure your contact details get uh, to Leanne and Damir, uh, so that if there's a need for further conversation after the webinar, uh, that can take place. Um, but it really is a, a great pleasure to have um, an opportunity to in introduce uh, people working together this afternoon. So Damir Zimmer, CEO of Scribestar, the Ambassador Head of Issuances at Arch Archax, um, are going to talk about how um, they're working together uh, to add value to the issuance process. Um, no further uh, conversation from me for the moment. I'll see you later with the Q&A, but really wanted to hand over now uh, to Leanne and Damir uh, for your presentation. And first of all, just um, tell us a bit about Artrax and Scribestar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Good afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you might be in the world today. I'm in London and I am Damir as well. Um, I guess if you haven't had a chance to Google Artjacks before the session, I thought I would just give a very high level overview of what we're doing. First and foremost, we are an exchange. We have an exchange permission from the FCA here in the UK as an SME growth market. And what it, I guess the other definition of our venue is a multilateral training facility, which is MTF. Now, the interesting part about what we're doing and the exciting part about what we're doing is we're the first and only FCA regulated digital securities exchange, MTF, as well as custodian and broker dealer. Now, what that means, because you know, I know we all work in a digital world, so digital means different things to uh, different people. But what it means to us is that instead of, in a, in a very simple form, instead of receiving a share certificate in paper form, and I know everything is digitized today, but just in simple form, you would receive a security that is deemed a security under MIFID II, so typically equity, debt, and units, in the form of a smart contract, which is born in the blockchain. So we're using an application of the blockchain, which there are many, and it's not cryptocurrency. It is an application of the blockchain to actually create securities. Now, Regulation and a number of things still has to change to really see the true benefits of the blockchain. But where our ambition is, is to bridge the old world and how traditional markets work and operate into the new world, which we see in the next five to 10 years will make markets much more efficient by using this new type of technology. Today, we don't trade on chain, but that's why we have our custodian and that's where all the security tokens uh, stay and omnibus accounts where we have a we run a central limit order book for the venue. And the reason I, I say all of this is because it is regulated by the FCA, which means that we still have to follow all regulations that exist in the traditional markets and all trade and transaction reporting and everything that exists in the traditional world. And it's cumbersome, it's heavy. And you know, a lot of issuers come to us and, and they're thinking, you know, they're using new technology. They want to come to us to have a liquidity event on our market. Um, but a lot of the founders of these smaller companies, they're tech companies, they're really brilliant people with great ideas, but they really don't understand the, the deep 
detail of being on an FCA regulated venue. We have agreed with the FCA that if a firm does have understanding of the FCA regulations and of course understands our rule book and all of their obligations, then they don't need to appoint an advisor, which on our competitors in the traditional markets are called nomads, nominated advisors, and they are required for SME growth market firms. We have agreed with the FCA that, as I said, if, if they have the requisite knowledge and understanding, then they can be exempt from that, which led us down the path to uh, meeting Five Star and really thinking this is a great opportunity to help issuers not only if they have an advisor or not, but put everything in one spot so that actually not only is it become more efficient or documents are renewed, make sure all, we make sure all of the documents that are required so that the issuer is compliant are there, and then all the revisions. So if there's ever any disputes in the, in the, in the in push forward when they're already, you know, when they're admitted to the venue, that we can go back and look where the changes were made and have all that tracking. So again, not only the issuer to stay compliant because they can be fined an awful lot if they're not, and it allows us to run, run uh, this efficient emittance process. And I mean, I, I can jump um, to what, what, what we're talking about future proofing because we have our FCA regulated brokerage. So some companies just want to come in, they're private companies, they just want to raise money, and that's it. We can put all of those documents on to the five star system, and then we have what we call a junior market, so not the full central limit order book, but more like a bulletin board that is run for FTF permission. It's less regulated, but there still is documents and uh, information that needs to be captured. But what's really great about the Scribe Star system is that once that firm is ready to go to a more public listing on the main board, all the documents and all the due diligence and everything that they've created is there. So it really helps them to move through the process, which we think we have a really unique offering, being able to have that brokerage, then the junior market, what we're calling junior market, and then the full uh, senior market. And I, I don't want to be confused with what our, the traditional senior market is, because that's a full listing like the LSB, and their junior market is Aquis, uh, sorry, is um, AIM here in the UK. Um, so I know there's a lot of information that I've just said there, so we can sort of pause here. I'll pass it over. Demir, and then we can sort of come back of how the, you know, this partnership really works uh, and how we're trying to make things much easier for issuers. Thanks, Leanne, for the intro. Thanks, uh, Mike, for having us, and thanks to everyone who's joined us today. So, Archox is effectively trying to build, and I think they've managed to accomplish that to quite a successful level of uh, quite a high level of degree. Uh, is a very efficient uh, market that uh, exists on new technology. Uh, Leanne was explaining um, and, and probably can go into very long detail on how blockchain can improve the trading side of things, clearing settlements and all of that, and hopefully make life easier for many of the market participants after they've been listed. But if you look at today's market, any market, not just Archox, and I'm sure Leanne is going to be okay with me taking some examples from elsewhere, uh, but the origination process of actually putting together documentation, uh, managing the transaction, managing all the people involved in, in, in producing an IPO, for example, or even any other type of security, it's a long and cumbersome process. It is genuinely today even though the topics might be different, but the tools are quite the same as uh, in the last couple of decades. Uh, you will be putting together information in, in, in multiple sets of very heavy documents, uh, trying to put together a story about a company, trying to figure out and, 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 and sort out the financials, uh, make sure that you're following the compliance rules, whether that's for the market, whether that's the FCA uh, uh, rules as well. Um, and then you will try to manage the process of a period that might take up to six months, 12 months. It's a very dynamic environment that entails um, quite a lot of information uh, sharing uh, in towards building a consensus. And typically that is done with words, uh, words e emails, uh, and phone calls. And I think it might resonate with quite a few of you that uh, more often than not, you might be working on not the latest version of the document. You might be putting in a comment that someone didn't really get 
didn't really see. You're not sure whether the right people are looking at the right paperwork. Um, but effectively, what we've done, we have uh, built a platform that digitizes the whole documentation, compliance, and transaction management side of things. Typically, when I speak, even though I know everyone on the call is 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 is, is from the financial services, when, but when I speak with people who are not really, I say that we have built Slack on steroids designed for capital markets. Effectively, it is a tool. It's a digital tool that lets market participants their documentation for issuing securities in public markets, even though we do some public, some private work as well, in a much more efficient and streamlined manner, uh, in order to uh, capture document, capture information in 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 the documents, and and pass that on to the, either the regulator or in this uh, case uh, uh, the exchange. Uh, we have managed to do that. Uh, for most complex issuances in the UK, we've done about 100 deals. We've done half of those are public deals, quite a few uh, IPOs of, of, of different variety um, uh, and different sizes. Uh, but with, with, with our checks, what we've done is actually genuinely built that within the environment of the exchange. So we have brought um, issuers and, 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 and their deal teams closer to uh, to, to the exchange in an, in, in terms of in, in an operational way, but also in, in, in the way that, that they uh, manage uh, data. Uh, uh, Liam was mentioning that the idea here is actually to give more power to the issuers and enable them to do some of the work themselves. And uh, that is, I think, what we have accomplished. How that will reflect on efficiency, I think we, we believe that it will quite well, and hopefully it will also reflect uh, on the cost um, as well. So I thought we might, uh, Leanne, do you feel that we could go on to the next slide and uh, discuss a bit in more detail how you see the actual listing process and then I'll go into how we plan to support it. Yeah, sure. And I just want to add one thing is that, you know, we, we are a relatively new exchange and we have gone through a, a few processes. And now uh, when we were going through with the first issuers, they had a lot of comments on some of our documents, our heavy documents, which we probably will, you know, make more standard going forward. But I would spend like an hour trying to figure out which version we were on because we didn't have Scribestar at the time. And, and you know, lawyers are involved and everybody you know, weighs in quite heavy with these kinds of things. And it, it, it just, it's just too a, time consuming and too much room for the potential of not using the right document or spending lawyers time, which we all know is very expensive to go back through documents they probably already reviewed. And so this is what we're really trying to avoid uh, by partnering with Scrubstar. So shall I, uh, Leanne, shall I go for the workflow? Yeah, sure. Cool. Okay, so uh, what you're seeing here is a typical journey that you will go through in any uh, sort of uh, 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 deal and, and deal origination. You will start by preparing the documents, whether that's a prospectus and admission document offering memorandum. Uh, you will have different people doing due diligence on that. Then you will probably go through a process called verification where you're making sure that the information in the document is up to date, uh, uh, correct and substantiated with evidence. Uh, then uh, you will go through compliance, basically making sure that the document is in line with the rules and regulations. And you will be doing all of that in, in a document set that exists somewhere in emails and Word. Uh, we have built something quite uh, uh, different. In today's world, beyond uh, beyond our checks, we uh, are used by uh, lawyers, advisors, um, uh, complete deal teams who would uh, use Crabstart to produce the documents and do all of the work that I mentioned. But then once, once they've done with that process, they will typically uh, go to the FCA and upload the documents there. We automate out outputs for the FCA, but the uh, information that gets submitted to the regulator is sort of again in PDF and 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 Word as you, as as you will know. Uh, but with our checks, things are going to be very very different. So you will be able to register and log in to an actual sort of a listing hub, listing environment for you, uh, where you can produce uh, everything you need and have everything ready uh, for your our checks issuance, regardless of which type of security you're doing or which part of the market. Uh, it might uh, be. Uh, you will select your type of uh, issue and uh, the system, uh, Scrapstar will uh, basically uh, provide you with a workflow uh, which you need to follow. 
what does that mean in the world of 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 of, of deal origination? If you if you're doing um, a token, uh, then you might have a different set of forms, different set of templates, and different set of rules that you need to follow. If you're doing a typical tra traditional uh, type of asset, uh, those again uh, will be different. All you will need to do is basically select the type uh, that you're doing, and the system will provide you with the workflow. That will give you complete assurance that you're following the exact uh, rules and you have uh, the exact forms and templates and documentation that is required for, for that. In the background system always keeps uh, updating information as well so that, um, for example, in, in your next one, if something has changed in the rules, you don't really need to bother yourself with that or consult with, with the corporate advisors. Uh, the system and Archax will do that for you uh, directly. Uh, you are going to create in the documents. There is all there is a different set of documents for Archax, and when we go into the actual demo, you'll see what those are. Uh, but the benefits of Scrapstar is that multiple people can work on multiple documents and even multiple different parts of the documents in parallel at the same time, but in a very, very controlled manner. You're always working on the latest up-to-date uh, uh, version, which completely removes the whole worry about uh, your documents crashing, you losing information, <laughs> uh, and, and, and not knowing whether you're working on the latest uh, version. Typically, the efficiency that we achieve just from this part, we get report that about 50% uh, uh, versus doing this traditionally. Uh, so from that point on, you can uh, continue managing your transaction, which would effectively mean doing your due, due diligence, doing your verification, doing your compliance. And then you will go into the process of admission uh, with the Archex team, which is going to be facilitated but by the same, same environment. So maybe in some markets, uh, typically, you will be requested by the listing team to either attach your documents to an email, and then you will try to coordinate within your own team uh, which documents need to be sent off. Uh, you'll be probably triple or checking whether those are correct and whether the right ones are attached to the email. You will be sending that off. Uh, some listing team somewhere will receive that. You wouldn't really know whether it's been received. Sometimes you'll get a prompt, sometimes you won't. And then those will be looked at. You'll get some comments possibly again in an email or maybe some comments embedded with a Word document. You will get that back. You will, um, you will um, uh, share that with your team or external team. Uh, and again, that process go, might go through quite a few iterations where mistakes regularly happen. Uh, with this, this is not going to be the case. So because you're working on a single source of truth, that whole documentation set with one click is prepared for uh, Archax, it's submitted to Archax in its complete uh, form with all the data that needs to be there. Uh, at that point in time, it shifts over to, to, to Lian, and Lian can do whatever the listing team at Archax does, and I'm sure she's gonna tell you more about that. But while she, while, while Lian and, and, and the team at Archax are working on that, uh, you can continue with your work on your end uh, in a completely uh, separate silo. So, Leanne, do you mind giving some insights on how you plan on using uh, Scrapstar for your review? Even though I know you don't like the word review, <laughs> but you're, look, you're looking at the documents and communicating with with issuer and and issuer's team. Yeah, and I, and I guess one thing I didn't mention before is we're not actually facilitating IPOs today. We have we are doing direct listings. So 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 an issuer will have completed a capital raise. Certainly they can do another raise after they're listed on the market. But um, we the documents are still quite chunky. So we have what we call an issuance document, and that is one that a, a lot of uh, the advisors get involved in in the traditional world, and it can it can be over a hundred pages long. And so even when we put it on here, we've worked with Scribestar to put together a template to make it easier for the issuer if they don't have the advisor. But we'd always say that it, it needs to get reviewed by a lawyer before it goes live. And that's kind of the part that we're, we're not reviewing it necessarily, but I, you know, we would look at it to see and make sure that it's complete before it goes live. Like there has to be an issuance document. I and mean, then that's one of the chunkiest documents that we have. But really, you'll see when, when we start the demo that it's quite simple. We have a on our a web page and we haven't got it sort of connected all up now because we're just kind of going through the first issuers. But basically you go into the admit page and it, it takes you straight into the Scribestar platform and, and it's 
powered by them. And it's very first thing is filling in an application form. And that is part of the rule book because it's starting to gather a story and gather information around the quality of the issuer. And so each of those have a, a step. So we go through each document that we require in a, in a, in a, a, a like a tick box manner because one thing happens, application document, we probably have a phone call, then we have to do an initial litmus test, which is, it requires a lot of information, sort of basic due diligence. Then we get admittance agreements signed and deposits paid for full due diligence. And we go through the full due diligence process and all alongside that, this issuance document should be started to get worked on. And then at the very end, I mean, we sign off on everything and we felt, you know, we need things like LEIs and ISIN numbers and what the float price is going to be. And if we don't, if, you know, we need proof of what, why that float price is the way it is, then we, you know, we need an independent review from uh, someone else. There. So all this sounds like a lot of work, but it it's so much straightforward when it's presented to you in steps and you can ha utilize those and you, once you finish one you go to the next one and as I said then it's stored for when they come to the next uh, iteration of their journey with us which would be the main market and we can draw on those documents that they've already created so that makes it much easier if they decide that they wanted to join the junior market first. Um, but we do have an issuance committee as well internally so we have to all those documents at the very end have to go in front of an issuance committee be reviewed and that's where the view, review part comes in and sign off that we make sure that we are clear that we have done everything we can and, and then you know really the issuer takes on a lot of the FCA uh, burdens if you will because the FCA will not hesitate to fine if, if things haven't been done right and that's why you know having it here to go back and double check for the issuer for us for lawyers if they're involved is is really really important because we don't want any of our issuers getting fined. Does that make sense, Demir? Is that what you? Yeah. It definitely does. I think it's important whether it makes sense for the audience, but I'm sure yeah. we'll hear <laughs> in in the questions. But I think just to give, maybe give some color as well. So who is this meant for? So if so, you probably heard a lot of discussions about public markets, and maybe somehow they are losing out to private as well. And then often people will mention that it's the case of that public markets and going to public markets is more expensive, it's, it's more difficult, uh, it's cumbersome, and it's a factor of, of simply a set of, of very complex regulations and a very complex uh, uh, process. It's also quite often you will hear that there's an issue of um, uh, compliance costs after you've been uh, listed, and we believe that quite a few obviously Quite a few of those depend on the regulations themselves, but there's a lot of things that can be improved with purely with the application of technology. So, for example, our trucks today exist in the same world and operates in the same rules as any other exchange, but due to technology, it should be and it is more efficient. The same the same thing applies to going to market and staying in market in terms of producing your uh, documentation for the issuance and staying in market in terms of uh, just doing your ongoing compliance. Uh, and, and your your company announcements, your your and any sort of paperwork that's required by by Archax to keep you uh, uh, in the market and listed. So we believe that with what we have in terms of purely just technology, we can uh, make go making going to market and staying in market much quicker and easier. And we have proved that uh, as Crabstar on on quite a quite a number of deals in in, in the UK. So in terms of the issuers, as as Leanne said, who is this meant for? So if you are an issuer, if you're a company uh, thinking of, of, of raising money and Artrex, uh type of, 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 of fundraising resonates with you <laughs> and it should, uh, then this is a tool for you. You will be using this to actually get admitted to the Archex exchange. If you're an advisor that is engaged by the issuer, let's assume that you just don't think you can do, do, do the work yourself. Again, you will be using, you will be using uh, this platform. Uh, that goes for lawyers, that goes for anyone and everyone on the deal team. So Scrapstar and this tool can facilitate any number of people involved on a single transaction. We've had from two to 70, <laughs> and that can be uh, the issuer, the, the, the issuer's councils, bankers, bankers' councils, uh, PR team, um, uh, accountants, and so on. But you will be the judge of what, what you need on, on, on your team. 
So what sort of uh, what sort of application do we have? As as Leanne said, you will you will be using this and you will be able to use this for primary and secondary market for your digital and traditional securities. Leanne was explaining that regardless of whether we're dealing with uh, security tokens, the rules are quite the same. Again, there's paperwork involved. You need to tell the story and you need to make sure that the information you're providing to the investors is up to date, correct, and substantiated with evidence. So the process is again quite the same in terms of producing the documents. It's very different in terms of what rules apply. Uh, and then the benefits. You will have easier market access. You will save time. Uh, you will be more efficient and you will be less prone to error. Uh, we have uh, gotten reports from uh, our clients that we save up to 50% of the time um, uh, on a typical deal. And this has been tested on quite a few uh, public assurances in the, uh, in, in the UK. And as Leanne said, we're now running, uh, we're now running a first deal on, 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 on uh, our check as well. So I'll pause there because I, I'm getting a prompt from Sa Sasha that we need to move on to the next slide. So uh, Mike, shall we invite questions? If not, we can go into the demo or Mike, maybe you have some questions. Well, we, we do have a, a question in um, from, um, <coughs> sorry, it's bear with me, from Martin White. He talked about um, Paul Miners, sort of uh, management speaker, who used to talk about the lack of incentive for fund managers to take part in company governance um, as it led to the kind of the ownerless corporation. He notes that we've got proposals in the UK to achieve sort of dematerialization of shares. Um, and in order to get full shareholder democracy, um, you know, Martin argues that it's essential that companies have direct contact with their shareholders. Um, and really just asking you to reflect on you know, how, um, how systems such as um, the one you're using might also help um, to keep companies in touch with their, state, their shareholders, which is a kind of different part of the, um, uh, 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 it's, it's following the issuance, I guess, but is there also a role for this kind of technology for keeping in touch with shareholders? Well, sure. So we, th in, terms of, in terms of what sort of documents and what sort of information you're producing, we're quite agnostic. So we, we, we can do any type of complex information that needs to go into a centralized uh, uh, place, whether that's a document, whether that's a presentation, whether that's, a, uh, that's something else. Uh, and we can facilitate uh, very controlled uh, communication with, between the parties, or whether that's, in this case, uh, the company and, and their shareholders. What the really cool thing about what we're doing and what Arjax is doing and what we can go into more detail a bit is that everything created on, on Scribster is actually in machine-readable format. We tag the information that exists in these documents. The benefit of that is you're not, you're not ending up with a static PDF that's <laughs> prospectus that no one really reads or needs to apply some properly smart tools to maybe extract some information from it. Uh, what we do, you're genuinely creating machine-readable machine, machine readable information from the get-go. So we are creating a digital data set. And that means that you can recycle that information for any other part of the process that exists after you've been listed. So that is reporting, annual reports, interim reports, trading updates, whatever that might be, including your communication with the shareholders. So you will probably get asked at some point or after you list it to produce some sort of a report that says th these are the results of our listing in the first month. <laughs> and you can genuinely go back and you can extract some information from that. You can also create your own templates and you can agree with yourself and your team. These will be the templates that we will be using for the report to the shareholders and you can have them in a separate folder. But obviously that doesn't sound too, too cool and too techy because you can do that on your laptop. But the difference is you have that, uh, that template, that, that information embedded uh, within a system that they can extract that information from everything you already done. Um, because for example, if you update a piece of information in one document, if, if it's linked to another document, it will update everywhere. So you don't really need to worry about it. So let's say your minutes or your, your, your report for the shareholders has a summary and then a bunch of documents we needed. We can link the information in the summary with those documents that make up the background information. And you, you're pretty much set to go and you could be sure that 
the summary is exactly reflects exactly what is in the documents uh, that that underlie it. If that makes sense. It does make sense indeed. Thank you so much for that. Uh, a question really for Leanne, I think. Um, John, John Hunter is just asking a general question about once shares are issued on Archax, um, how are they traded? Um, so is it is it similar to any other trading system? Yes, it is. So we use Aquas technology actually, so the matching engine and market surveillance. So basically we're doing a direct listing. So again, we're not doing the IPOs, but we can piece it together because we can do a primary range. Um, and we can, I start off by saying digital securities because we absolutely can. We're the only ones that can in the UK, but we also can do traditional. So we have to, we have a platform where everything trades in fiat. It's a central limit order book. So much like Aquas, the LSE. We're just not a main board. So our commissions are MTF, multilateral trading facility versus the RIE, which is the recognized investment exchange, which is the full listing, which even is more uh, heavy on the regulation. But yes, so that, that's how we operate. Thank you. Um, and Andrew Ross has got a question, maybe the last one before we go into the uh, demo. Uh, just saying the Loan Management Association has a borrower's guide to investment grade agree agreements. Um, is, your, is your system better, simpler, cheaper, um, better at meeting the, kind of the various um, standards that are set for um, investment uh, operations? I think that we, because we are a new venue, you know, we're not a big beast with lots of bureaucracy and over the time because we are trying to fit new technology and we've had to pivot quite quickly and I think that always is an indicator that you are running a more efficient market. Now people come and say, oh, the blockchain is, is going to make everything uh, much cheaper, but in order for us to run an FCA regulated firm, we need lots of in individuals that work for the firm, like compliance people, operations people, we we're heavily watched on that. So it doesn't mean it's going to be cheap, like outright cheaper in a number of ways in the traditional markets. But in we are building out for a, a much more efficient post-trade space where we see everybody running uh, running nodes. Uh, so all the brokers, and you start to cut out the intermediaries that are involved, like clearing houses, the back offices, because when a trade happens, it'll be in a private chain, everyone gets updated at the same time, and then you're going to start to see massive costs strip out of, of running a, a market. So it's going to take some time to get there, and we have to build it with, with regulation in mind and making sure institutions adopt that, so it's very important to us. Um, so, uh, you know, I know that it, 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 it's a cost saving over time that, you know, we're going to work very hard um, and there's still a lot of regulation and uh, interoperability uh, globally that, you know, we're constantly working with government boards and the FCA to make changes so that we in the UK remain a tech hub and bring these efficiencies and cost savings to capital markets. Well, thank you very much. Um, Damir, we haven't got much time, I know, and you normally would um, take quite a long time to go through the uh, demo. Um, and I also think that uh, it might be running a bit slow because we're on GoToWebinar and <laughs> running a demo. Um, but over to you, just for give us sort of flavor as to um, what the system can do. Yeah, I think that's going to be the leitmotiv flavor. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll quickly go through uh, sort of just for you to visualize what we've been talking about and kind of just uh, tell you where it is and where you can find it and how you should go about learning more. Um, so effectively, as uh, Leanne was mentioning, so this is Archax website. And typically, if you went to any exchange, <laughs> um, I mean, maybe you as an issue wouldn't be doing these things. You'd be paying uh, a lawyer to do it for you at a very... At, at, at a very high rate, but with, with our checks, you will um, just land on the web page and there's a little links here that says admit, you'll click on that. Uh, I'm imagining I'm, in the, I'm the issuer. Uh, you will sign up uh, and you will apply for admittance. Uh, and effectively, the process will consist of these basic steps, agree suitability, complete our checks agreements, uh, perform the due diligence on the our side and get onboarded. These are the actual steps that you will be doing on, on Scrapsite itself. Um, uh, I mean, typically in, 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 in anywhere else, you would be doing all of this in Word, you would be exchanging emails and so on and so on. Uh, but instead of that, you'll apply for admittance and you will land on a page that looks like this. Thanks, Mike, for saying that. So <laughs> GoToWebinar go has slowed us down a bit. Uh, so uh, don't, don't 
don't um, if 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 it's if it's slightly slow to load that that is why. So this is the landing page. You will you will sign up to uh, this as any other service uh, at 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 Archex. Um, I'm now just imagine you are uh, the issuer or you might be someone on the deal team on the issuer side, and uh, you would be doing this literally at the beginning of the day that you are starting to put together your initial information, um, and you would uh, log in uh, into your uh, dashboard, which uh, looks like uh, this. Uh, this is the demo dashboard. So uh, Ethereum Superfund doesn't exist, <laughs> but uh, it's there for uh, as an example. So. Let me give you a quick overview of what you're looking at. All of these, each one of these would be uh, the listings that you're working on. If you're a, a, a corporate advisor, a very successful one, you might be, you might have three IPOs. Uh, but let's say you're just working on this one uh, for now. So this is your set of documents. Set of documents that make up your deal at Archax. Uh, if you click on each one, you'll basically go and um, and access access each each document. So what would you typically be doing? Uh, you'll go here and you will just create, let's say, a new transaction if this one didn't exist. And you'll give it a name, say, new deal. And basically, all you'd have to do is just select and say, new Archex uh, uh, listing, and you will be assigned all the forms that need to go uh, with that particular uh, uh, listing. Uh, you can also upload any document internally that you might want. Uh, Mike, you were mentioning information for the shareholders. Obviously, there can be a lot of documents that make up uh, uh, IPOs beyond the ones that are prescribed by Archax, and you can just simply create a new one whenever you want, uh, either from a template or for a war, from a war document, or you can recycle any of the previous documents that you worked on along with all the compliance involved with that. And then the next thing what you would be doing is you would uh, create your team, you would add your users, they will get an email uh, that basically prompts them to join you on the system. Uh, and you can give them very specific permissions. Uh, and that can be also people within your own team. Let's say you are the CFO and you just want to keep control of everything, but you might have some juniors that you just want to give editing rights, which basically means nothing else that they can play around, uh, suggest some changes, propose some comments, um, uh, but those won't go into, into the document unless you approve them. Um, you have commenting rights, verification rights, uh, checklisting rights, and then typically when everyone is happy or you want to keep full control over the system, you can just suspend access uh, to uh, people as well. Uh, you have also some uh, ability to create tasks which is typically very, very useful. And it, uh, uh, those tasks remain within the environment of that particular listing. And you can recycle the information uh, that you need, uh, that you've been using on pro producing your documents. You can recycle it for your, uh, any sort of tasks that you might be creating. You can also have, it's sort of like a task management side of things uh, that gives you ability to track uh, what's happening on, 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 on the deal. So you can click on any of these documents and you can get to your work. Uh, let's say I've opened an issuer uh, application form uh, and you have the admission document uh, template. So this is very, very, very cool uh, in terms of Archex because there's a, an actual template with all the parts that you're supposed to fill out. And uh, the cool thing with, with Scrapster is that multiple people can work on multiple different parts of the document at the same time, depending on the permissions that you uh, gave, uh, 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 that you assigned to those uh, uh, people. And for example, if I hover over any of these, you'll see that it tells me what this is. Um, and this is kind of the data management side of things. So, and I can have that in any, in all the paperwork that I have on this particular deal, and it's already set up. Uh, and a very easy way of basically getting yourself uh, quickly together with the first draft uh, would be to just go under blobs, which is basically data from your uh, document document set. So all of this information exists somewhere, is tagged somewhere in the documents. 
and you can just quickly and easily insert all the information that needs to uh, be there. And instead of doing this on a one single form, you're doing this simultaneously on all the documents that make up that transaction. Um, and you can change that quickly at any point uh, in, in time. You can just quickly update the information. And uh, a lot of uh, very cool things that you can do with this uh, as well, which is basically updating all of that in XLS or C CSV form as well. So for example, if you have external clients or external parties that uh, want to uh, give you information, but you don't want them on the system, you can do that as well. Um, and the document, in addition to just you being able to draft, uh, you can also do all sorts of different stuff as well. Uh, you can allow for certain information and uh, suggested changes to come in or not. You can quickly see who's it from and, uh, and at what time it came in. And you can decide whether you let that uh, information go in or not. I can click here. I can see what the changes uh, were as well. Uh, I have commenting and I can have a lot of power around that as well. It will keep all the comments embedded within the document itself. So not every single so every single version has the updated comments on it. So you're always working on the latest uh, information, uh, the latest version of the document and the latest uh, set of, of comments. You can reply to those, you can resolve them, you can create uh, new as well. There's a really cool feature which allows you to see what different um, uh, 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 terms mean in the document as well. This one is pretty obvious. This one is pretty obvious, but it can get quite complex as well. Um, and then the other things you can do, we have a really cool tool which allows you to verify the information in the document as well. And that information will be embedded within the whole document set. Typically, we've just produced a single one, which gives you an idea, which is you need to prove that you've been incorporated in England and Wales. I can mark up that statement. I can assign uh, a tag to that type of information. I can assign that to whoever is responsible and I can assign and I can attach evidence to that as well. And everything will remain on the system and you can offload it for producing your uh, uh, information for possibly your investors or, uh, or, or for anyone else who might be asking you for this uh, sort of thing. Uh, or yourself, obviously, as well, because you will need to do some uh, ongoing compliance. Um, there's a data room in the background which facilitates all that data. And then you can also track whether your uh, uh, a document is in line with uh, the requirements uh, from uh, Archex. And Archex has a checklist which tells you uh, what needs to be, what are the minimum disclosures in, in your document. And you can quickly link the information in that, um, in that uh, 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 document with the part of the document that it refers to. And you can also have a communication with the listing team and Archex uh, on whether uh, something else needs to be done with that after you've made that submission. So that is kind of it. I'll just quickly show you the final part, um, which is once you've prepared any of your documents or a document set, uh, you would easily and quickly create the submission, click here and produce either a follow-on or a first one. It will also give a black line, basically just to show quickly to the team on the other side what has changed since the previous submission. You can click here, create. It will show up here under submissions and you can have your full control. When was the first one you submitted? Um, what's happening with it? Uh, the review has been closed. You can look at that version, go back at that as well, or you can go to the latest one that you produced, click submit and send that off to Archex and Archex has a similar uh, uh, looking dashboard that allows them to do very cool things on their end, but effectively uh, review your documentation, make some comments um, and, and uh, request further information from you um, and keep everything within the ecosystem that exists on this digital platform within the Archex environment. So I'll pause there because I, I know we're kind of at, at the end. Uh, we we are coming to time, but uh, thank you so much for that um, quick overview. And I think the message is that if people out there who are involved in advising or involved in wanting to issue or know people who are wanting to issue, um, please get in touch with uh, Demir and Leanne. Um, they'd be delighted to help. 
Um, and um, it's been fascinating to look at um, you know, the way in which uh, you've applied this technology um, to you know, a particular, um, particularly burdensome uh, piece of administration uh, which people issuing face. So thank you so much for that overview. Um, we are up to time. Um, so just a few rounds of thank yous. First of all, to our sponsors, once again, uh, we really are grateful for your support in uh, letting us run this webinar series. Um, just a word on the uh, future events coming up. Um, Tuesday, uh, why we care about data culture. Um, I can see Demir might want to sign into that one. Um, on Tuesday next week, taking the floor, models, morals and management in a Wall Street trading room. And then on Wednesday, the 27th, satellite technology for assessing global terrestrial carbon stock. Um, so some interesting um, sessions coming up and do keep an eye on the website for for, for future events. Um, but just really to close by thanking Demir and Leanne uh, for that overview. Um, it's been interesting in, in, to just get into some of the detail um, of how technology is being used um, in the real world uh, to do real things. Um, so normally on an event, I'd be able to throw this open for a round of applause. Uh, instead, you just have to imagine a round of applause from the audience um, and just accept a very small one from me. Um, but thank you so much. Can I just add one thing? My email address is wrong in the presentation. It's two keys. So um, I, I missed that. So uh, my apologies. So it's Leah Bassett as it appears on the screen now. Um, and it's l.bassett at archex.com with two keys. That's super. Thank you so much, Leah. Thank you. Um, so, to, so without any further ado, thank you very much. Um, we look forward maybe to uh, seeing you again to tell us about the success of the system um, in the future.